Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we are solving multi-step inequalities. Before this video, you should have done a lesson where you were solving one-step inequalities with adding and subtracting, and then also knowing how to solve inequalities with multiplication and division, especially when you're multiplying or dividing a negative on both sides of an inequality, you learned to flip the symbol. So we need all of those skills plus step builder notation and also how to graph um, our solution on a number line in order to be successful in this lesson here. So if you need to rewatch any of those videos, go take a look before you start here. Solving a multi-step inequality is just like solving a multi-step equation. We have to look at our inequality, look at the inequality symbol, treat it like it's an equal sign, and then we just need to balance it. So we need to see if we have constants on both sides of the equation, we need to see if we have variables on both sides of the equation, and that's gonna help us solve our inequality and get the variable to be isolated. So here in this first problem, I have negative four y minus 23 is less than 19. I can see I have constants on both sides of my equation, a negative 23 and a positive 19. I would know in order to get this y isolated, I would need to remove the negative 23 by adding 23 on both sides, which would bring me to negative 4y is less than 42. Now, we know in a one-step equation what we would do here. We would divide by negative 4, which is the same thing we would do in this inequality. The whole purpose of that, of course, is to get our negative 4s to simplify out. But something that we learned in our previous lesson was that if you divide by a negative in an inequality, the inequality is going to flip itself. So instead of it being less than, you are going to see it's going to be greater than. And I can write my answer as negative 22 halves, or I can write it as negative 10.5. We want to make sure we can write our um, answer, our solution in set builder notation. And I know I don't have a number line drawn here, but if I wanted to sketch a quick little number line and put, you know, negative 10.5, I would need to know that my solution should be an open circle because greater than is an open circle and then everything is shaded to the right hand side. So this is what y is greater than negative 10.5 would look like. For this next problem here, again, I see I have variable, I'm sorry, I have constants on both sides of my inequality. So in order to get this x to be isolated, I can subtract nine on both sides. So then I'm left with two thirds x is greater than or equal to negative 12. We remember in our solving equations, if we have a fraction being multiplied by our variable, the way we do that is we use our multiplicative inverse, and so we multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And when we do that, we should remember that the threes will simplify out, the twos will simplify out, because three over two times two over three is just one. And then negative 12 times three is negative 36. And negative 36 divided by 2 will give me that negative 18. And then I can, of course, go ahead and put it into set builder notation. If I wanted to make a quick sketch of what this graph would look like, and I make a really terrible number line, actually, um, if my negative 18 is there, greater than or equal to means a closed circle because the negative 18 is included in the solution set and everything greater than it is shaded in to the right. Okay, next couple of problems. 7b plus 11 is greater than 9b minus 3. Now this is one of those inequalities, just like those equations, where I have variables on both sides of my equation, and I also have constants on both sides. So technically I could do any step I want to first. I could subtract 7b on both sides. I could subtract 11 on both sides. I could subtract 9b on both sides. I could add 3 on both sides. Any of those steps would work. When I happened to solve this equation, I decided for whatever reason, I wanted to subtract my 7b out on both sides, and this is what I am now with. 11 is greater than 2b minus 3. So now I have constants on both sides. I don't get to choose anymore. I would then need to add 3 on both sides. I get 14 is greater than 2b. Divide both sides by 2. Now, the only case here that we just need to be aware of is if you're solving an inequality and your variable is on the right, we've been down this road before, we need to make sure we reverse the entire statement so that the variable is first. So instead of 7 is greater than b, I would say that b is less than 7. And I went ahead and I put it directly into my set builder notation. 
B is less than 7, if you need a little reminder about what that graph would look like, it would be at 7, you would have an open circle, and then everything less than 7 would be shaded in. Okay, in this problem here, negative 5 times G plus 4 is greater than 3 times G minus 4. So what we would have to do here first is we would need to distribute. So negative 5 times G is negative 5G, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, and then 3 times G is 3G, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. I have that situation again where I have constants and variables on both sides of my equation, so I technically can get rid of whatever I want to first. For whatever reason, when I was solving this equation, I decided to subtract 3G on both sides first as my possible first step. So then I'm left with negative 8G minus 20 is greater than negative 12. Now I don't get to choose. I have to add 20 on both sides at this point. I end up with negative 8G is greater than 8. I need to divide both sides by negative 8. And remember, if we're dividing or multiplying by a negative on both sides of an inequality, the inequality symbol needs to flip. So my answer here would be G is less than negative 1. Hey, okay, I hope we're following along pretty well. So far, these problems have been super friendly. If you want to pause right now and see how you do on these next two problems, go for it. But we're going to see we have some special cases going on here. So 3t plus 7 is less than 3 times the quantity of t plus 2. So 3t plus 7 is less than 3 times the quantity of t plus 2. So we know the regular drill. We're going to go ahead and distribute this 3 here. So we have 3t plus 7 is less than 3t plus 6. So we go ahead. Let's say we wanted to subtract 3t on both sides. Notice 3t is the same expression on both sides. And when we subtract them, it's actually completely gone. Our variables are gone. And we should remember this from solving equations. There's a couple special situations for inequalities. If your variables get completely removed and you are just left with a constant on both sides of the equation, you have to look at that statement and determine whether that statement is true or false. Is 7 less than 6? The answer is clearly not true. If you get an inequality that's not true, that is going to be a case where the answer is no solution. And no solution on a number line, guys, literally means nothing is shaded in on the number line. You can put numbers at the bottom, but nothing is shaded in. There's no solution. There's no number in the world that you would be able to substitute in for t, and it would give you a true statement for this inequality. Let's look at the next problem. So we want to go ahead and distribute everything here, okay? And we end up, you know, distributing. We get 24m plus 18 is greater than 24m minus 36. We see that same case again where the variables are the same on both sides. And when we subtract them on both sides, we are left with another statement of just constants. But now again, you read the statement and you determine whether it's true. Is 18 greater than negative 36? Well, yes, that is a true statement. So because that is a true statement, what that means is that the answer, the solution rather, are all real numbers. Any number in the world that you want to plug in for m here will give you a true statement when you substitute it and you evaluate it out. Okay, so when you are left with an inequality of a statement where the variables are gone and it's not true, that means no solution. If the variables are gone and you're left with an inequality statement that is true, 18 is greater than negative 36 then that's when it's all real numbers. I have a few um, word problems here that we're going to be taking a look at. So let's see. It says Nathan has lost his mother's favorite necklace. So he will rent a metal detector, obviously, right? Because that's what everyone does to try to find it. A rental company charges a one-time rental fee of $15 plus $2 per hour to rent the metal detector. Nathan has only $35 to spend. What is the maximum amount of time he can rent the metal detector? So we're going to let H represent the number of hours because that's what we want to figure out. What's the maximum amount of time, which is going to be hours, he can rent this metal detector? So there's a one-time fee of 15 plus $2 per hour. So remember when you're translating and you're writing equations, in this case it's an inequality, this would look like 15 plus 2H, okay? but we only have $35 to spend. 
So that means he could spend up to $35 or less than $35. So the inequality we would use would look like this. 15 plus 2H is less than or equal to 35. This means the amount of money he spends can be less than 35 or the amount that he spends can be equal to 35, but it can't be over 35 because he only has $35 to spend. We have constants on both sides. Let's subtract the 15. We end up solving this super basic inequality and we get H is less than or equal to 10. So what does that mean? It means Nathan has a maximum of 10 hours to find the necklace. So a maximum of 10 would be that less than or equal to 10. He has up to 10 hours. He could do one hour, two hour, three hour, nine hours, even 10 hours, but he can't spend 11 hours. He doesn't have enough money. The solution in set builder notation looks like this. And then when I go to graph it, is it, it is a closed circle shaded to the left for H is less than or equal to 10. Okay, pretty good. Let's look at the next one. Andy, Bobby, and Carl are each one year apart in age. The sum of their ages is greater than the age of their father, who is 60. How old can the oldest brother be? So if they're one year apart in age, one is one year, like let's say one is 10, one is 11, one is 12. Um, that's that consecutive integer problem that we saw previously in another chapter. So if I call Andy X, I say his age is X, Bobby would be one year older, so X plus one, and then Carl will be one year older than that, so X plus two. The sum of their ages, so if I add up all of these ages, is greater than the age of their father, who is 60. So here's what this inequality would look like. X plus X plus one plus X plus two is greater than 60. I'm gonna go ahead and combine my like terms. So I get three X plus three is greater than 60. Subtract three on both sides divide by three on both sides, and I end up getting X is greater than 19. So this means, guys, that Andy has to be greater than 19 years old. This is asking, how old can the oldest brother be? So Andy has to be greater than 19, which means Bobby has to be greater than 20. And then that means Carl has to be greater than 21. So not only do we have to set up this problem, but we had to read carefully as to what the problem was really asking us to figure out. And so Carl has to be greater than 21 years old. My solution in set builder notation, and then my graph would be an open circle shaded to the right because that's where all the values get greater than 21. Last problem, the area of a triangular garden can be no more than 120 square feet. So picture you've got this garden, you have, let's say, enough mulch or soil that's going to stretch out for 120 square feet. So you have to like game plan, you know, how um, wide and how long this garden can be. The base of the triangle is 16 feet. What is the height of the triangle? Now, remember, when you're talking about a triangular um, space, okay, you have... I'm just going to make it a right angle because it makes it a uh, right triangle because it makes it the easiest. The base of the triangle is 16. I want to figure out what's the height of the triangle. So what we need to remember is area formula of a triangle is one half base times height. I know my base is 16 and I know my height is something I'm going to actually solve for. So if I know the area can be no more than 120, 120 is going to get plugged in for my area this base of 16 is gonna get plugged in here. Now it says no more than 120. So that means less than or equal to 120. So one half times the base times the height H that we wanna find has to be less than or equal to 120. Half of 16 is eight, divide both sides by eight, and we end up getting H is less than or equal to 15. So the height of the triangle can be no more than 15 feet. Here is my solution in set builder notation. And my graph is a, less, is a closed circle rather shaded to the left. Thank you so much for following along with me. I hope this was helpful for you. Bye.